Node.js is great. It can not only deal with your business logic, but also act as a web server, meaning it can do load balancing, it has a cluster module, it can also do rate limiting and so many things. Now the question is, why are so many people still using Nginx as a reverse proxy together with Node.js? This is what we're gonna learn in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. I always like to start my videos by giving a bit of a context. Meaning before we start talking about why to use a reverse proxy, we first need to define what a reverse proxy is, okay? In our case, it's an Nginx server that lives within our virtual private cloud. What it basically does, it, it, it accepts requests from the client that are incoming, and then it modifies this request on the fly. Modifies meaning it can modify its headers as it usually happens, or it can also modify its body in some rare case. And then, it redirects this modified request to one of our node servers. For example, this, actually we have three of The cool thing is that it also works the other way. The node server now sends a response to the client and our middleman, our reverse proxy, AKA Nginx, again, modifies the headers if necessary and then sends it back to the client. Okay, now that we understand what a reverse proxy is and how it operates, we can also understand its benefits that it brings. All right, so the very first benefit is an SSL encryption. As you know, every modern website communicates via HTTPS. In some rare cases, you can see HTTP, but it's usually not a good practice. What can happen with HTTP or where you would you could see it is actually within your cloud, a virtual private cloud. For example, this node server can communicate with this node server and with your Nginx server with HTTP. This is fine if you don't want to add overhead your network. But there's a hard requirement. Whenever we have a communication with the outside world, meaning our client, we always have to talk. So this part always has to be communicated via HTTPS. This is a hard requirement. Okay. And now you can argue that why do I need an Nginx server if I can set up an HTTPS communication with my Node.js server? Well, the thing is, I already mentioned it in my previous videos as well, if you follow my advanced Node.js playlist, is that this kind of configurations, for example, SSL encryption and many others that we're also going to talk about, you don't want this con uh, configuration to live within your Node server. Your Node.js server has to only take care of the business logic of your application. Everything else can basically be dedicated or outsourced your reverse proxy, all right? And the way you would set it up is very easy. An Nginx server usually has this nginx.conf configuration file that you would find in every server that's running Nginx. And it's of course, sometimes hard to read, but in this case, it's actually very simple. So the most important block here is the HTTP block. And here it has a block called server. What it basically says is that, hey, I'm listening on port 80, which is an HTTP port, and I'm listening on these specific domains. And if I receive a request on this domain, on this port, I'm going to return an HTTP status code 301, which translates to a redirect. And I'm going to redirect you to this host. Now, the funny thing is that this host that we're being, to, being redirected to is actually our second server block. And now this one is listening on port 443, which is an HTTPS port, all right? Again, the same domains that we can define. And the interesting part is that here are our, here's our configuration for SSL. Again, very easy to put your key, private key and certificate, and you can actually update them if needed with a simple cron job. So it's super easy to maintain it versus if you would maintain it within your Node.js server. So as you can see, this is already a huge benefit. Now. Before we start talking about the second point, which is buffering, I quickly want to talk about the application that I'm using, this blackboard that you're seeing. It's called Eraser. Well, I have to say, this is the first time I'm using it for one of my videos, but I'm already loving it. It's super nice, it's super flexible and very intuitive to use. And you can create different types of diagrams, such as a flowchart, an entity relationship and cloud architecture diagram that I'm actually having now to basically demonstrate my architecture. And you can even create diagrams with the help of an AI. Basically you type code and it creates diagrams. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use it in one of my future videos, 
But what I wanted to say is that I'm already loving this application and I would recommend you to check it out. It's totally free to use. And shout out to my friends at Eraser for sponsoring this video. And now the second point, buffering. Buffering is kind of interesting. So let's say a client makes a request to our server, wants to fetch some data, and our node server receives this request, does some processing, and wants to send the response back to the client. Now imagine this response is a bit bulky. Let's say it's like eight megabytes, all right? It's not too small. An interesting question arises. Do we send this eight megabytes right away to our client? Or like what in one go? Or do we send it in small chunks? The thing is, the answer depends on the internet speed of your client. If the internet speed of your client is slow, this request that's coming here to your cloud, to your Nginx server, theoretically, is going to be hanging there for a long time because we're going to be sending the response like one by one every time establishing a connection. And it's really not good. And actually hackers can exploit this function with an attack called slow lowers where they're sending hundreds of requests, very slow requests that are hanging on your, on your server and can bring your server down. That's why we need buffering to basically tell the node server, hey, I need this answer for this request the node server starts sending pieces of response to your Nginx server first before sending to the client. And slowly this Nginx server collects the small responses until it collected everything, the whole big thing, and then it sends it to the client at once. And this is cool. The thing is that we can add it by literally adding these four lines of code and of course changing the settings as we want. How cool is that? You wouldn't be able to do that within your Node.js server so easily. Okay, the next point is recovery, aka error handling. Meaning, let's say one of your Node servers is down or the user is requesting a page that actually doesn't even exist. What do you do then? Well, of course, you define some error pages here or you define some redirects if you want to. And of course, you can define a custom error page for every type of an error. HTTP status code that you get. So it's very flexible, as you can see. And also you can copy all this code for an Nginx configuration from my GitHub page that you're gonna find in the description. So if you want to use it for your own Nginx server, feel free. And the next point is load balancing. And you can say, okay, Node, Node actually has a cluster module. It can do load balancing. Hey, but come on, we're talking about enterprise applications applications that are at least having like 500 requests per minute, so there is some pressure, then load balancing with Nginx would be just an amazing thing to do. First of all, Nginx is super powerful with load balancing and you can enable it by adding simply this block where you define the service that you want and their IPs with ports, and then the rest is taken care of. And of course, Nginx supports different algorithms for load balancing, such as round robin or random assignment, or looking at which server has the least CPU usage. And I also have a video on load balancers, so check it out if you want to learn more. But basically, it's very powerful and can do that too. The next point is enterprise route. Well, what is it? Let's say we have this node server three, and we want to reserve this server specifically for product searches. Because let's say we're Amazon, we have a huge catalog of products and product searches are actually getting a fair amount of re requests from the clients. So we want to redirect these specific type of requests to only this server. The rest can tackle whatever, all right? And again, it's very easy to do, to do it with a reverse proxy. You can simply define a route, like let's say a search and everything that goes to this route with an asterisk at the end, because it can have sub, sub path is going to be routed specifically to this server as easy as that. The next point is GZIP compression. Most of the website have GZIP compression because it's efficient. And again, the way to enable it with uh, Nginx is very simple. It's simply two lines. And of course you can define which files you want to be GZIP. And it's usually recommended to GZIP text files such as just plain text or CSS or JavaScript files. Image files, I wouldn't recommend to GZIP them because JPEG and PNG files are already compressed. So there's no reason to gzip them even more. And with that understood, it's as simple as that. The next point is actually caching, caching static con. Let's say your node server is actually sitting or serving your WordPress website and you have some static assets. Instead of doing it with Node.js, you can configure your Nginx server to do that. And actually Nginx is known for being very good at caching static content specific. So let's say you have some Im images that you know they're not gonna be changed in any time in the future, 
you can simply add some cash headers and now your static assets are cached in the most efficient manner. This is it guys. If you like this kind of playlist, check out my advanced node playlist or system design and architecture playlist. I think you're gonna find them useful as well. And of course, if you wanna support my channel, support my sponsors as well. In this case, it's Eraser.io. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.